All right, we back once again with another video. This one, we're gonna dive deep into the world of Gex theory, okay? The world of Gex theory. We're gonna think about what is happening in the options market, and that's all we're gonna care about for the next 10 minutes or so, okay? And what is happening behind the scenes, you know, on the other side of your charts, on the other side of the ascending wedge that everybody loves on the other side of you know RSI just hit 80 or on the other side of oh I just got a MACD bullish crossover you know uh, anyways on the other side of all of that there's this whole other world of dealers and market makers who could give who craps about any of that stuff and which is part of the reason why most of that stuff in in aggregate don't really work that well um, and here's what happens is once you kind of start to understand what is happening here on this screen uh, and once you really really internalize it you will be able to essentially like essentially predict where the price of the market is going to be at with a relatively high degree of accuracy what can you do with being able to predict or being able to know ahead of time where the market's going to be at close. If you uh, essentially know where the market's going to be, then you already have a, you have a leg up on almost everybody. Okay, there's obviously other people that are probably doing this already. Maybe not consciously. Maybe they are. Um, but essentially, you already have a leg up on everybody. You, do you even need do you need a MACD crossover if you know where price is going to close? Do you need you know your RSI indicators do you need you know that algo that looks really cool you know you don't need any of that stuff and that's the point of me doing these videos is essentially I'm like Morpheus here trying to free my own mind and and free yours yeah that was corny but anyways it's true it's true so what we're gonna talk about here Gex theory um, that's why I call everything Delta, okay, you gotta learn what that means, Delta. You gotta learn what Charm means, you gotta learn what Vanna means. And we're gonna kinda go through how each one of these, we're gonna go step by step, how each one of these are affecting Delta. What we care about is how are these, how is Charm, how is Vanna affecting Delta? So, I'll try to break it down. Delta, probability of price going in the money. So if you have a 99 strike, uh, 100 strike above, 98 strike below, basically the delta is going to tell you what is the probability of this 99 of the price going in the money at 100 or going in the money at 98 then you'll get a you know a delta of saying it's like 0.99 if it's 0.99 it's 99 percent chance if it's 0.92 92 percent chance so on and so forth that delta is what the market maker the guy that on the other side of your trade he's just a liquidity provider he's not essentially betting against you but in a way it is because he gets the delta hedge and what that means is he doesn't care if it goes in the money or not because he's hedged against it so that's what these deltas are going to essentially uh, tell you is what is the market maker going to do based on the change of his deltas okay what are the probability of him essentially having to pay someone out as time goes by that's going to be our charm and as volatility changes, charm is going to be the effect of time on those deltas. Those deltas are either going to grow, so his risk is going to go up, or his risk is going to go down. His risk of losing money is if his deltas go higher. He gets paid more, but his, he's going to you know, essentially have to pay out more. His deltas go down or go neutral, he doesn't care as much. So, here, because here's what's going to happen. If the charm, the time on these deltas is going to be affected because we're getting closer to the expiration. So that time has a curve. That time is going to go up, right? As time gets closer to the expiration, essentially time is up because it's going up and it's essentially, you know, those options are about to expire worthless because there's just not enough time left anymore. So the delta. The probability of price going in the money for these market makers goes down. Probability of in the money goes down. 
what happens there? If the probability of the in the money goes down, the expected range is starting to shrink. If the expected ranges, say the one and two standard deviation, those start to shrink, those out of the money options are going further out of the money. If they start falling into the third standard deviation or two and a half standard deviation away from price, and time is running out and time is going exponential, so your theta, your time is starting to go exponential, then what's going to happen? What is the market maker going to do with all of his hedged shares on those puts that he sold you, for example? He sells you one put. It's two standard deviations out of the money. There's one hour left in the day. Here, this is a scenario I'm just thinking of. And he basically had to short 100 shares to sell you the one put. Does he need the 100 shares anymore if his delta essentially just went to zero on those on those puts? Or if, say, say it cut, cut in half, so now he only needs 50 shares to hedge against you, uh, to go be delta, delta neutral against you. So if he, if he has to buy, so if he shorted the shares, he's got to buy them back. So as time is going on, he's buying shares, buying shares, buying shares. So he's buying shares uh, as your put as your put essentially goes to zero. All right, so say, say for example, now you're sick of it. You're, you've lost 50% of your premium. Uh, this thing is obviously not going in the money. All right, and you just close the put. Okay, does, does dealer need hedging protection anymore? Does he need to help you know, hold on to his short futures or short spy uh, any longer? No. So what does he do? He goes ahead and just buys all his shares back. You know, he doesn't need, why would he want to stay short? Because now he's got, he's got mega delta, delta risk by holding short shares and he's not, he's not hedging with the other side. So he's going to buy those shares back. The expected ranges shrink, probability of in the money goes down. Market maker starts to unwind his own hedges against you. Uh, and then you go ahead and close your put and he just goes ahead and just market order all his shares that he was hedged doesn't even matter so this happens on a broad broad scale so this is what we are looking at here on charm vanna volatility okay so is iv implied volatility is that in the calculation is it in the mathematics of how an options premium is calculated yes it is all right so there's a little bit of the function here of the options premium the options premium Essentially, IV, if IV is high, what happens to the options premium? It's going to get a little bit of juice, right? You heard that. These are juiced up. IV is high. You know, they're expecting some big move. What happens when volatility is high? The expected ranges go up, right? Increase. Okay, so your, your one standard deviation that was only two, two points out of the money is now four points out of the money because IV doubled. Or, or whatever so they're expecting a larger price range so this is where you get into the predictive the predictive nature of options premiums all right what happens if volatility goes up probability of in the money goes up okay if volatility is up sorry from these notes are bad but I'm just trying to just stay on track for myself uh, volatility goes up so it, it, vice versa so volatility goes down calculation and the options premiums changes the expected ranges decrease and then the probability of in the money goes down all right so vanna two pieces of essentially the same coin because they're essentially affecting the expected ranges they're they're affecting the probability of in the money and so you have to understand how both of these things work okay so let's look at a chart gamma exposure chart here is, here is essentially the delta band going through uh, the chart. So thanks to Ocklocracy, who is part of the Investors Haven Discord. Uh, if you guys have not uh, joined into that Discord and bugged him and asked him questions about this chart, you should because he's the one who built it. And he knows way more about it than I do, but I'm going to do my best. Okay, so this is going to be the delta band. So these are the deltas at each strike. These are essentially where you can look at this and go, okay, market maker, 
uh, effectively, uh, you know, has low deltas here, okay? And he has low deltas here. Uh, that's where the delta, because the probability of in the money is really low here. Probability of in the money really low. Probability of in the money pretty high right here, okay? Uh, price closed at 38.63. So, uh, you know, this curve is, is pretty nice. Um, so your deltas are really low here. Delta's really low here. Delta's the highest here, obviously, because you're in the money. So that makes sense. Delta's pretty high here because there's a good chance it could reverse. So on and so forth. So you got to keep an eye on that delta curve. Uh, then you got the implied volatility behind it. All right. So we're looking at all this going, all right, uh, you know, the idea of the market maker is to try and get price into this area where it's, it's delta neutral. So you always have this competing flow against you as a trader. And this is what's important to know, is that the market maker, every trade you put in, he's just hedging for it, delta hedging for it. You buy, you buy a put, he shorts 100 shares. You buy a call, he buys 100 shares, so on and so forth. He's never at risk because he's always delta hedged. He's, what is he going to pay out? Okay, so what? You make your money, he just gives you the, just gives you the shares, but he made money on the upside anyway, so he keeps it anyway, so it doesn't even matter. Um, or you sell it. You sell your you sell your call. Big deal. He just sells his shares and he goes back delta neutral again. So it doesn't even matter to the to the market maker in most cases. Here's where the imbalance happens. The imbalance happens when the market maker essentially is getting it has has gamma exposure. That's where you ever heard the term gamma squeeze. Uh, this happens all the time. So you heard of the GameStop gamma squeeze. That's, that thing, that type of move happens on different scales every single day. And it happens in SPX every single day. Someone is always getting gamma squeezed, in my opinion. And uh, a lot of times it's, a lot of times it's just, uh, you know, it's just the puts getting destroyed every single day. And the reason that is, this is why you always have to come in and I fight this because I'm a perma bear. You always have to come into the market assuming the market is going to kill the bears because the VIX is going down. The VIX keeps going down. And if you're in my Discord, I'm always talking about there's too much VIX. Too much VIX. The VIX is a piece of crap. It always goes down because everybody always shorts it because there's too much VIX. The market makers, the dealers, they have too much of it. It's always going down. Every time it goes up, they short it. Every time it goes up, they short it. Every time it goes up, they short it. They sell it. They liquidate it. They get rid of it. They don't want to hold on to VIX. VIX is useless. So money always leaves the VIX. There's always a natural outflow of the VIX. The dealers always have too much. People are always too scared. People are always trying to hedge. People, The whole entire world is trying to hedge their $500 trillion in long assets here. So the VIX is a piece of crap. Never buy it. Even if it goes up and you get paid out once, it's garbage. Okay, anyways, that's the idea you have to come into with the market. So people that are gamma expo are creating gamma exposure to the downside are always at risk of being being gamma squeezed because the VIX, that banner that we're talking about, is always having an effect on the market. It's always having an effect on the dealer's delta. They don't need to hold on to shorts because the volatility is always coming down. It's always working against you. What's the other thing that's always working against you? Time. Time is always working against you. This is why the market loves to sell you puts. Puts, puts, puts. It's all about the puts. They want to sell you puts. Why? Because the volatility is always coming down and time is always clicking on, right? It's always just trudging on. You're always running to the next expiration, to the next expiration, to the next expiration, thinking the market's going to crash. But it never crashes because why? Well, VIX is always going down, VIX is always getting sold, and time is always marching on. So this is why the market, essentially, the market dealers are just sitting here selling you insurance every single day against something that hardly ever happens, and that you already have. Uh, you're always essentially at a severe disadvantage to buy puts. It, it almost makes zero sense uh, to buy puts as a as a trade because the odds are so severely stacked against you. Now, it works sometimes, and uh, those are my favorite times, is when the bear markets come, and, but that's, that's, 
you know, 20% of the time, 80% of the time, it's, you know, the puts are going worthless. Maybe not this year. It's a little bit higher uh, probability of, you know, hitting a put, you know, and hitting a put trade. But anyways, and, and nobody loves puts more than me buying them long. But here, that's essentially what it is. It is such a worthless, useless thing to do uh, because you already got, you already have these natural flows working against you because you have volatility killing the deltas, you got time killing the deltas, and you got the market maker basically unhedging his position against your position. He's hedged, not at risk. You got volatility working against you, you got time working against you. And so your put is always going to zero, essentially. It's always trying, it's trying to go to zero. Think about that for a second. You're buying an investment that wants to go to zero. Go on long VIX. VIX wants to go to zero. People buy it because they're, you know, they all own long assets. Everybody owns real estate. Everybody owns, you know, uh, you know, a business. Everybody owns stock. People want to own stocks, so they're always buying puts to protect against their long positions. So if they don't want their long positions anymore, they're not scared anymore or as time is marching on. So like what's happening here, time is marching on. We're approaching expirations. That's why the options expiration is such a big deal. Uh, dates are such a big deal because people are gonna just sell their puts. They're gonna sell their insurance. They don't need it anymore. It's garbage. And I'm an insurance agent. Anyways, this video is getting a little long, but uh, I don't think I wanna waste it. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop it here and if this video has any you know interactions if there's like likes and comments and subs from this video I'll do another uh, set of this uh, hopefully this stuff makes sense and if it doesn't let me know in the comments I'm sure you will because I'm sure there's somehow some market makers gonna watch this be like you have no idea what you're talking about man anyways we'll talk to you next time hopefully